Hung Met did not trip over feet coming upstairs. Christine, are you around? No? Damn. I just wanted to say, I see your vinyl record collector, and I raise you one bike collector. So this month's reason for my, my apartment not being featured in Home Beautiful is two bike carcasses currently decorating the lounge room. Anyway, that's not why I'm here. Five years ago, two things happened. I joined eBay, and I became an eBay seller. I'd done some buying on eBay before, but no selling. So I set myself up with a brand new account, zero feedback, zero inventory, and zero experience in online retail. Like a lot of consumer sellers, I had a few things around the home that I could have listed. And I had a little bit of experience in offline retail, but nothing even remotely like the scale of a marketplace like eBay. First thing, something to sell. What am I going to sell? I found these. A little difficult to see. Does anyone know what this is? It's a cell phone sock. It is a sock that was specifically designed in Australia for putting your cell phone in so you can throw it into your bag and it won't get scratched. That's how I chose to launch my selling career on eBay, with a low-cost product in possibly the most crowded category that we have. Started from zero, and by the time I left Australia, almost a year ago now, I had over a thousand sales under my belt, and I'd sold 500 of these. Three different sizes, some of them are fluffy, but still, I was quite impressed with that. How did I do it? eBay marketing tools. And that's what we're going to talk about today, how you can harness the power of two for yourself or for your sellers to grow a business, any business. We're going to start by discussing why marketing is important. This is probably going to be one of the less technical talks that you hear over the, the three days. We'll start, go right back to why marketing is important. Then we'll talk about exactly what it is that's available in the marketing API. And we're going to finish with a practical example. Um, if you could please hold questions till the end. We'll look to have sort of 10, 15 minutes then to, um, to answer some questions if you have any that come up. Uh, if you don't have any that come up, I've been told to try and keep the energy high so we can just push the chairs to the side and have a game of dodgeball or something like that. You'll play, I'll referee. Okay. Why is marketing, merchandising, and advertising important on eBay? I'm going to ask you to put yourself in the buyer's shoes for a moment. Two things we know. Buyers have choice, and buyers like a bargain. Choice. There is so much choice out there for buyers today in terms of where they're going to shop, where they're going to spend their time. Offline, online, a marketplace like eBay, or a direct seller's website. And loving a bargain. 83% of sellers like to shop with a promotion. 81% like steep discounts. 50% of shoppers are comparing prices on their mobile phones. I was going to say prices on their mobile devices, and that rhymed, and it just felt a little funny. 
they're comparing those prices, what are they going to see when they find your listing or your seller's listing on that phone in a comparison shopping? So we know marketing's important to buyers. Why is it important on a site like eBay? We've already heard there are 169 million active buyers globally. 169 million. That sounds like more than enough to go around until you consider the 1.1 billion active listings. How do you catch the buyer's attention in amongst 1.1 billion? I only have three cell phone stock listings. It's not easy to do. We know that the buyer journey still, the majority of the time, it is starting on search. So you're starting with that search results page, seeing all those listings. Without marketing, you've got to catch the buyer's eye somehow in that result set. Then, if they move through to the item page without marketing, at best, you get one of your items shown to that buyer. At worst, you might see other sellers' similar items shown there. So how does eBay marketing make that work for you? How do you assist that buyer on their journey? Starting with search. Promotions Manager and Promoted Listings, two of eBay's marketing tools, help you stand out in search. If your item is in a Promotions Manager promotion and it's a really great offer, then on search, we're going to show a teaser. Buy one, get one 50% off. It has to be the teaser that you put on it. Then, if you are also using a promoted listings campaign, you've given that item the best chance of getting one of those sponsored places on the first page of search. Combine that with a teaser, that's your way of really making that listing pop and stand out. It popped, it stood out, it caught the buyer's attention. They clicked through into the item page. What are they going to see when they get there? Are they going to see the pair of boots that they clicked through on, along with maybe more of your hiking boot range, maybe some complimentary items like a camping stove that you'd forgotten you needed for this trip, a paddle for the creek you think you're going to find yourself up by the end of the weekend? Or are they going to find a bunch of random things as I did the other day, when I was pen shopping. I clicked through on a pen. I thought I might see some other pens, some writing materials. But instead, I found an umbrella, an easy dog snack pack, and some mustache wax, which would have been my kind of perfect if I was a dog-owning hipster with a handlebar moustache living in Seattle. But as a pet-free female living in sunny San Jose, it didn't quite meet my expectations. Oh, wrong way. Go back. So this is where marketing the marketing APIs come into play. What we have today covers just two of our tools that we have available on eBay, Promotions Manager and Promoted Listings. These are two great tools. They've both been available through the user interface for several years now. They both have proven track records. Promotions Manager ordered discounts. If you're not aware of what they are, this is your merchandising opportunity. This is your chance to showcase your items to buyers. 
an order discount. You will have seen them out in, in retail stores um, and in other, on other retail sites. It's where you, the seller, because you're pretending to be sellers if you're developers, it's where you, the seller, set the spend or quantity threshold that you want. It might be spend $100 by two or three or four. And then you offer a discount or a benefit, but only if the buyer meets that threshold. Spend $100, get 20% off. Buy three, get one free. You're choosing the inventory that's covered by that promotion. Promoted listings then, another one of our great marketing tools. Promoted listings is fantastic for driving traffic to your listings and also helping turbo, turbocharge those new listings. Again, it's a self-serve product. You choose which campaigns you do. You choose which listings go in there. You choose the ad rates that you set. So that's you saying, I am prepared to pay X percent to try and capture those prime listings in search and throughout the buying flow. These are the two key tools that we have in the marketing API. They are independent tools. They both work well separately. They both have proven track records. But the real magic happens when you put the two of them together. Harness the power of two. Think about it this way. No marketing. I list an item. A buyer has to put in the right search terms. My item is returned somewhere in that search result set. The buyer has to see it. Then they have to be engaged enough to click on it. And when they get through to the item page, that's still the only thing from me that they're seeing. It's that one-to-one. -one. But what about if instead I listed it, I put it in a promotions manager promotion. I make it a really great offer. So now, when the buyer gets the search results back, it's got the teaser. It's got something that helps it to stand out from all the rest of the search results. They see it, they click on it, and on the view item page, they're seeing not only that item, but they're seeing the complementary items that I put in there with it. So this is where you don't mix up your pens and your moustache wax. Then, I've listed it, I've put it in a promotions manager promotion, and I've also put it into a promoted listings campaign. Now I've given myself the best possible chance to be returned on the first page of search. Placement four and five, you'll see those sponsored placements. And it's got that teaser on it. It's the best possible chance for that listing to be seen by the buyer and engage the buyer's attention so that they click through. And all of a sudden, they're not just buying one item from you, they're shopping with you. Okay, now on to the fun stuff. I am not expecting you to read this. There will not be a test. Um, this is just a handy cheat sheet that we've put together for you to take away. Two different tools. They work differently. They do different things. They have different resources within the same API. A nice, easy way to remember this is that if it says promotions, promotions, item promotions, promotions report, promotion summary report, that goes with promotions manager. If the resource is labeled campaigns or ads, then it's going to be a promoted listings call or resource. Both sets have create, read, update, delete functions. They both have functions that do very similar things, but they are separate. 
Now, I just want to uh, talk you through a couple of limitations or considerations at the moment. For Promotions Manager, there are a lot of, if you've used Promotions Manager through the user interface, you'll know that there are a lot of different promotions type, promotion types available. Today, order discount is the only promotion type that we offer through the API. But the good news is, that's the promotion type that gives the sellers the most flexibility and has great buyer engagement. Promotions Manager is also only available for items listed on the US, the UK, Germany, Australia, France, Italy, and Spain. It doesn't matter where you're registered. If you're a CBT seller and you have listings on one of those sites, then you can use these tools. Promoted listings has full uh, UI parity, I would say. So anything you can do on the Promotions Manager user interface on eBay, you can do through the, U, the, UI, uh, the API as well. That's what I'm talking about, APIs. Now, having said that, right now, if you're creating campaigns in the user interface, you can only manage those campaigns in the user interface. If you're creating them in the API, you have to manage them in the API. So those two are separate. For promoted listings, you can use it on sites, on listings on the US, UK, Germany, and Australia. Both tools are available to store subscribers. There are a couple of exceptions, but it's not worth going into here. Assume you need a store subscription to access the tools. And both of them have separate terms and conditions. And those terms and conditions need to be accepted through the UI by the seller to use the tools. All of this is documented in the fantastic uh, API documentation on the developer portal. So it's got the full list of URLs that you would need to go through and accept the terms and conditions. Okay. Now we're going to head into that practical example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a way, one way, of using the two tools together to create an event. This is one approach to retail marketing. We're split into plan, execute, and measure. Starting with planning. We're going to do our prep work. We're going to make sure that we've accepted all the terms and conditions. That's a, that's a one-off thing, then it's done. We're going to know and understand where our inventory is and how it's uh, classified. And we're going to understand which items, if any, we don't want to include in these kinds of promotions. We, it's also a good idea to have some sort of goal with an event. And a goal can just be get rid of it. But when you're thinking about scaling your business, what do you want to do? Do you want to increase your basket size? Do you want to increase customer spend with you? Um, try and have, have some sort of goal for this whole event. Executing. Once we've planned, then we move into executing, creating a relevant, curated promotions manager campaign that's supported by a, sorry, promotions manager promotion that is supported by a promoted listings campaign. Finally, measuring. Both tools have reporting available that are going to let you both monitor the progress of your event and also look at how it performed at the end. Both those things can be fed back in to either make adjustments as you go along 
or feed back into the planning cycle and see what you might do differently the next time to make this an even more successful marketing event. All right. So, request, body and response. And I believe we're getting slide packs. Uh, the presentation's going to be made available. No? Yes, excellent. So, what we're going to start with here is the planning. We're going to start with our call out, whether it's promotions manager or promoted listings that we're talking about as we go through. But you can generally see in the request which one it is. We're starting with get all promotions. So I've stopped being a cell phone seller because apparently in America, no one knows what they are and I've moved on to greeting cards instead. I've got in mind um, some retail moment that is just crying out for greeting cards, and I've remembered that sometime in the past, I've already run one of these campaigns. So I'm gonna run Get All Promotions, and that's gonna give me back a list of all my promotions manager order discounts. I'm gonna constrain it by marketplace. I only wanna see what I've done in the US and I'm going to constrain it by promotion status. I know I did this in the past, I know it's not running now, so I stick ended on it. I can see I've got 13 campaigns come back, and the big thing for me is this, this top campaign is the one I want, I need the promotion ID. If I want the details, I've got to grab the promotion ID. So that's it, greeting cards, save 5% for every $10 you spend. On the user interface, I'm just going to, I'll be doing a little bit of flipping back and forth between the calls and the interface, just so if you have used the tools in the past, you can um, line up what we're doing with how it looks in the, the UI. And if you haven't, um, this can be a good way of uh, checking in on what you're doing. So if I was on the Seller Hub Promotions Manager dashboard, I'd constrain it by order discounts and ended and get the same result set. Got my promotion ID. I'm then going to use Get Item Promotion to bring back the details of that campaign. Check the name. Check the status. Yep, that's the one I want. I'm going to grab that response and slap it into the body of a Create Item Promotion. Rip out the promotion ID. From, from the body, because we don't need that. We're creating a new promotion. I'm going to change the name, change the description, alter the dates, fix up the status. I'm going to check my category. Is this the category I want to use? And then I'm going to look at my discount rules. So last time it was 5% on a $10 spend. I really want to up the ante on this. So I'm going to make it $15, $15 spend, 25%. You spend $15 with me on greeting cards, I'm going to give you a 25% discount. 13 different types of promotions that you can create with the order discount. They're all documented with exactly what you need in the container. It's all documented on the developer's portal. If I was adjusting that 5%, $10, 25%, 15 this is where I would be doing it on the UI. Okay. So I've kicked off that campaign, but then I've thought to myself, hang on, that was priority two. This is the most important thing that I'm running at the moment. If I've got inventory in multiple campaigns, if that's overlapping, then I want this to be the top top campaign. So I need to change that and update the priority to one. I've also decided that on the offer page, which is another page that we um, provide, automatically generate for sellers for the buyer interface, 
there's a different image that I want to use. I didn't put in an image when I created the campaign. There's one I want to put in now. So I do steps one and two again. Get all promotions, grab the new promotion ID, get item promotion, grab that response, put it into this update item promotion. This is a full refresh for item update, uh, update item promotion. Okay. So you will need all the fields. You won't need promotion ID because that's in the, in the request. <coughs> I'm making my adjustments to the fields that were in there that I want to change. I'm adding in my URL. I'm running it, getting a 204 response. It's all done. So that's updated now. And if I look on the UI, I can see it sitting there all happy and scheduled and waiting to go. So just before I start on tying in my promoted listings campaign, you remember when I created the campaign, I used a store category ID. So I don't know exactly which listings are in that campaign. So I've got another call here, get listing set, that I can use to bring back that full list of inventory that is currently relevant to the promotion. You may have heard mention a few times that rules uh, have been added into the marketing API for creating promotions manager promotions. Well, what that means is I can specify a category ID, I can specify filters, and that's a dynamic inventory set that is going to be used for the life of that promotion. Anything that goes into that category, anything new that's listed in that category is going to show up in that promotion. So I run get listing set to get my, get my actual item IDs. I park that to the side for the moment and I start on promoted listings. I ran get all promotions to get my promotions manager campaigns. I'm going to run get add campaigns to get a list of my API campaigns for promoted listings. I can see that I'm already running a greeting card campaign. Fantastic. So I pick up that campaign ID and just a quick, ooh, that's better. Quick call out. You can see API campaigns on the UI. They'll have the little info symbol to the side of the name. So that's another way that I can sort of qualify. If I'm on there, I can see this campaign's running. I need to, I want to make changes to it. I'm going to need to do it through the API. So I had my campaign ID and I run get ads. An ad is the combination of a listing and a bid amount. In this case, I can see that all the items, all the listings that I had covered in my promotions manager promotion are covered in my promoted listings campaign. Great, but they're at a 4% bid rate. I want more oomph for this campaign. I want more traffic coming to these listings. Because I don't have to create a new campaign or add in ads, I'm going to use the bulk update ads by listing ID in order to increase all of those bids for the duration of this campaign. Up some to 15%, up some to 10%, run that and I'm all ready to go. So that's it. That was my campaign's all set up. I've executed it. Time has passed. Buyers have bought. They've shopped. <laughs> Reporting. How do we know how it all went? Back to Promotions Manager. We have a site level report, but I want more detail than that. So I'm going to use the Get Promotions Report call in order to return me back a paginated list of all the promotions that I currently have running. It's going to tell me things like how much promotional spend, how much was spent by buyers 
actually triggering that discount? What were, what were my total sales? What was my average order size for this promotion? All those kinds of useful details that help me understand if I met my event goals, the goals I set myself when I started this journey, and also what can I do to this the next time around to make it perform even better? How can I feed that back into my planning? If I was using the UI, there is a download report link, and I would get that same information from the Promotions Manager dashboard. Now, for promoted listings, I can create a custom report, which is great. I use Add Report Task. I define my metrics. I define my dimensions. I define my dates. And running this is going to add this to the scheduler, because it's an asynchronous report. I can then use get task report, get report task even, to see how that's, uh, what, what status that is in. Now, I had a teeny tiny little report, so it's already run. But for a longer report, it might take a little longer to generate that. Gives me a report task ID, and I use get report to download the zip file from that. Again, on the promoted listings campaign, uh, sorry, promoted listings dashboard in the seller hub, you could get the same information or the same sort of information using the download report link. So. That is what I have for you today. That concludes our practical example. And I hope that gives you a good idea about the, some of the features and functions that are available in the Marketing API and how you can take those and harness the power of those two products.